Hello, everyone. We should be live. Welcome to the Windbreaker Podcast. I'm Yahtzee Croshaw. I'm joined by Marty Sliver. Hello, everyone. And Sebastian Ruiz. Hello, everyone. Uh, well, well, this is the weekly live podcast we do here on secondwind.com. <coughs> Excuse my voice. I've been talking bollocks all weekend. And those things get stuck in your throat. Oh. Remember, you can support us on Patreon and by buying our merch at uh, Shark Robot or by uh, donating Super Chats to this stream as we talk, which we will read out in the second half of things. Sorry about that. Nick keeps n- nagging us to uh, nag good, you for money. It's a good nag because now we all get that money. Also, the podcast is available on audio services like Spotify and iTunes. We are number one in iTunes gaming currently. We did good, everybody. I'm proud of us. Oh, Christ. Only well, down from here. <laughs> so we can only blimey. go downhill from yeah. here. That's, that's suddenly set off my imposter syndrome. Yeah. What? Marty, you're a bit, you're a bit quiet, people are saying. Eric, can you, can you give me a hot boost? I bet Eric can give me a hot boost. I believe in Eric. Oh, man. We, anyway. We've peaked too soon. We smoked yeah. too hard. Oh, well. That's like getting your third Michelin star. It is. <laughs> but, how, but to get to our actual subject this week, we're talking about uh, not so much the games we liked in 2023, but the individual innovative game mechanics we uh, that stuck out for us in the games of this year. Mm-hmm. For there has been a many textured, interesting thing to talk about. Where do you want to start, lads? Can we start with the art? Can we start right, with? Oh, do you want to go chronologically? Well, you I'm guys probably... came in kind of like just picking yeah, you up know, sticks. So. You know what I should have done there? I should have like fingered one of you specifically. That was one of those ambulance moments, wasn't it? You don't say someone call an ambulance because no one does anything. You got to say no, you so specifically you call don't an ambulance. Need to say you should have fingered one of us specifically. That I, doesn't I'll seem like a thing you need to say. All right, I'm fingering you now, Marty. Oh what, no! What, what do you want to start with? Um, I'm going to shock you guys, and I'm going to talk about The Legend of Zelda uh, Tears of the Kingdom, which is on our box art, and you see Link's cool hand, uh, because in my opinion, uh, that game uh, is is made and is incredible because of the uh, amazing uh, systems and mechanics uh, that come from uh, Link's new hand. Uh, specifically, mm-hmm. I think Ultra Hand, Recall, Fuse, and Ascend, which are the main abilities in that game, which take ostensibly the playground we were familiar with from 2017's Breath of the Wild, um and uh reuses it in a way that seems completely fresh by these new mechanics and they are mechanics that feel like they should not work in a video game like they feel like they give yeah. the player too much power and yet for me it worked perfectly they feel like dev tools and the yeah. challenge <laughs> of the game was to sort of uh, give you dev tools in a way that you could still translate into a sort of video gamey challenge arena Mm-hmm. So it wasn't just Gary's mod, but with yeah, Link. That's the one. Exactly yeah. where I go. Sounds like Marty would love Gary's mod, but I think even you, Yads, brought up once that Gary's mod is just like, well, dear, do whatever. You you are God, whereas the limitations are what makes it fun. Yeah. Yeah. I think when it comes to that sort of thing, what a game needs to do, if it's going to give you that sort of crazy mechanic, is give you, like, on the surface, relatively simple tasks and uh, set you loose to see what creative solutions you find for it. I'm thinking of Teardown. You guys played Teardown? Love Teardown, yeah. Yeah. That's uh, like the game where the entire level is physics objects, and uh, uh, all that game really does is say, hey, go to this computer, this computer, this computer, this computer in order, and uh, just activate them as fast as you can and leave the level. And then you have to like create a sort of heist plan where you mark out routes with spray paint and blow open holes in walls to give grant yourself quicker access. Yeah, I think that's the big difference than something like Gary's Mod or even like a Minecraft. I feel like when when you give me uh, too much freedom and not enough of a structured goal, I don't know what to do with myself. But when you give me those tools for freedom and present them in a structured manner, like I think one of the smartest things Zelda does is in the shrines in uh, mm. in Tears of the Kingdom, it teaches you new ways that you can use the tools that you didn't realize. It teaches you, like, don't forget about Ascend because there are so many times, because I played 500 hours of Breath of the Wild, I'd be like, I need to climb over this. I need to figure out how to get above here. And I'm like, oh, I literally have the ability. That did start as a dev tool that could just zonk me out of this room. And let yeah, me tell you, if a game lets me zonk, I'm going to zonk. That zonk move's kind of the odd one out for me. As you say, you keep forgetting that you have it. Yeah. you got to put a sticky note on your uh, TV that says, remember to zonk. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I did. Um, but yeah, that was, uh, to me, when I think about this year, 
that's probably the thing that I'm going to think about. Although there are a lot of uh, a lot of other ones, especially in indie games, that really stood out to me. Uh, Frost, did you did you have any in particular that you wanted to start with? I say, because uh, I I was nice about it, and I put them chronologically. March 23rd was Storyteller. Little storytelling mm-hmm. permutations. I'm not sure who played it there right now. It's got yeah. mixed reviews, but I think it's that mixture of like great game, solid two hours, maybe not worth the money. And that's like where the that clash went because it is super duper short. But just this idea mm-hmm. of like, here's three characters, here's a setting, and you can stick them in different ways and that will change the outcome of the story. I was like, okay, yeah, I want to see more of that. Sure, why not? That might be one of those games where the... Uh... Uh, the mechanic is the most interesting thing about the game. I feel like it didn't ultimately come together for me, but I love that idea of here are nouns and verbs and and humans and backgrounds, and you need to figure out how to create a story that gets from point A to point B. I like the one, and and this is where I agree with you, where it's like it feels like it, it just got it going, but didn't fully like make a, a game, so to speak, and why it might not beat the tech demo allegations. Where it's got some where it goes, make a story where it's like lovers to friends to enemies. Mm-hmm. To, and, and, or swatch, switch it around to like rivals saving each other, still killing each other or something like that or, or whatnot. Like, I was like, this is fun. This is fun. But I feel, mm-hmm. I feel like it needed a bit more meat, but we are talking just mechanics. Yeah. It got a bit weird where one of the, uh, the uh, stories you had to create was... Uh, a man kills his brother for seducing his daughter. And you've got to spend like half the initial uh, frames just establishing familial relationships, just with the yeah. one frame that says, you are my son. Yeah. yeah. And oh, uh, yeah, we yeah. are. <laughs> yes. yeah, th- those that are always just like, man kills, man, man kills woman for wife or whatever. And then it's like, man is married to his mother. In that, well, it, in that break, same thing, you know? it breaks down like the pieces of storytelling and turns them into like mathematical equation. Yeah, which it's I find it's really it's interesting. Like a flow chart at that point. Yeah, and uh, he the crazy thing about that is I saw I, I hung out with the developer and saw him demoing that game in 2013 at GDC. So he had been working on it a very long time. And he's worked on other stuff since then. And like, I think he's helped Jonathan Blow with some stuff, which mm. kind of makes sense uh, where that thinking comes from. Uh, but yeah, I was, uh, I was more impressed by the, 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 the mechanics on paper than I was with the final product. But a cool thing feel, that I still think about. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like a game that was worked on for too long. Because when I think of games that were worked on for too long, I think of, um, of that Fortunes Run game I was playing on stream last week. Mm. where uh, <laughs> the designers just put 500 million references to different games that they like yeah. in it. I think it might have been a solo passion project for a long time while doing other things to pay the bills. So um, yeah. I know 12 Minutes was similar. Um, that was a game I saw a demo of five years before it came out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Dog cam. Dog cam. There it is. Dog cool. Oh, there it up. is. Dog we cam's dog up. Cam. Wake up. Eric Sofie. Eric soon, You're dog a cam. star. You're a star. Open your bloody eyes. Because you're always uh, sleepy. <laughs> um, no, it's just always sleepy in the mornings when he knows I'm not going to be taking him for a walk anytime soon, so he might as well just pass out. Incredible dog cam. That's a mood right there. Super chat oh, to support dog cam. Uh, Frost, what yeah. else? Uh, what, let's, I like your chronological list, and then we can like, fill in oh, gaps. You like, you like some of mine, then? I, I do. Like, M- March 30 was Dredge. Ooh, ah, uh, yes. On my end. Dredge. The, the, the world mechanics. Yeah. The madness mechanics. Yeah, I, I thought that's we were, not the one I was going to go to. Oh, no, yeah, I thought you, we were talking about the uh, the inventory management stuff. That's what I was going to go to. Yeah. yeah, I I think maybe I was the the naughtier one. Yance, you said that during your playthrough, you wanted to stick to curfew and and stick to the shores and whatnot. Me, yeah. So I I, was, I didn't really engage much with the uh, uh, the things that imply that you're going mad when you're out at night. Uh, no, that was, was the game. Because that, that, that was the game yodeling to me. Don't do this. Don't go out at night. We keep telling you not to. Why do you defy us? And because it felt like, you know, presumably something bad was happening that was going to make the game harder, I assumed. Did you ever end up staying out too late or going mad and what happened? Yeah, once or twice. It was mainly just weird wibbly wobbly red effects all over the place. No, I mean, and like, I think, why did you go mad? What, what, what were you completing an objective? Was it saying stay out at night or what, what happened? I think I just got uh, back to 
the headquarters island too late because I'd been out. I misjudged the travel time for getting back. And I yeah, encountered the things me. where oh, God. I encountered the thing where sort of delusional rocks start appearing in the sea around you. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's it's uh, one of those games where that mechanic is uh, more threatening and and scary when it's the unknown near the beginning of the game, and especially when you have a slower boat. Like by the end of the game, I was like, I'm not scared of darkness. <laughs> I've got a, I've got a jet behind me right now. I could zoop wherever I want. Um, I did like that there were certain things, uh, certain like side quests and things that could only be activated through madness, like certain things in the world that yeah, the weren't rocks. what they appear until you were feeling the madness. And uh, I I always think that's cool to where you have to like embrace the 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 punishment. That sounded like a sex thing, but um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. the game sort of the madness and Lovecraftian stuff sort of gets demystified in that game. Because mm -hmm. I remember the first time I ran into a giant fish, and the giant fish just sort of smashed my boat and kept right on swimming. And I was like, "Hey, you asshole!" So, so and the feeling of "Hey, you asshole!" That was my boat. Sort of quickly supplanted the feeling of "Oh my god, it's a giant fish." Yeah, I'm wondering how how well behaved you two were though, because that's the thing. Firstly, this like I my first playthrough, I was definitely like, oh, "I don't want to stay out at all." But there's like more reasons to go mad. Be it, you know, you got back kind of late, or, hey, these fish are more expensive. They get you more money if you do mm -hmm. go mad. And then eventually I was just like, all right, let's see what happens in the full-blown madness. So you have those fake rocks that come out. First time that happened, I was like, wait, that was not there. You know, I, I pride myself in sense of direction. I was like, that was definitely not there before. And you say, like, that's less scary as you, as you get a better boat. But I slammed into so many of them because I was just going so fast. There was, there's that power-up that you can gain madness but go faster. Mm -hmm. I, was, yeah. I was just slamming into those gaslighting rocks mm -hmm. left and right and center. But then you also get like those phantom boats that look like they're coming straight at you, and then they disappear right when they get into the lights. First time, I'm like, okay, whatever. You get used to it. But then it came at me, and I'm like, it's about to disappear. And then the light turned into an anglerfish type thing that attacked me. I was like, all right, you got some tricks up your sleeve. And I, th I think... In the end, I, it just comes it becomes this cozy eldritch thing, where I'm like, "Oh, I need to make it to this island," and then the sun comes through, and there is no island there in front of you at all. Mm -hmm. Like I went really far into the madness mechanics to see what they had, and I was just like, "Well, okay." Because <laughs> oh, I like games like that. Yeah, if you're gonna mess with my mind, gaslight me in the way that um, what was that game we talked about last week? Mess Eternal with the volume slider and yeah, Eternal, Eternal darkness. darkness. Yeah, like you use, use the tech, use the mechanics to really like mess with me as a person, not just like my character. So yeah, oh, I remember for me. loved it. Back when I was messing around with uh, adventure game design, I was playing around with adventure game studio, and uh, one of the uh, coding uh, commands I found in the manual was a, a command you could use to open the CD tray of the computer because wow. this was back when computers had those. And obviously not every computer has one of those. So the, the manual was saying, uh, this doesn't really have any use. So, and I was thinking, I beg to differ game. Uh, so I experimented with doing like a sequence in a, like a game I was working on, where like some crazy magician said, behold my incredible power, and then make the CD tray go in and out. Uh, Look at that, your own cycle. I, I wouldn't yeah. get it, because I, I don't have one. No, nobody does anymore. <laughs> this was back in the day. Yeah. You know, well, that's like reading a memory card. You're like, I don't have a memory card. I don't know what that means. Yeah. Yeah, Shit. Well, um, uh, what would you do? What would you do these days? Um, I, mean, I isn't guess it what stuff like Doki Doki Literature Club do and and Undertale, like playing with files on your computer and I would, yeah. What could you I'd do with hardware a, these days? Like I'd give them a virus. I would overclock their CPU. Start, some, you know. Well, I, I think know games. I've got. I've got. I've got one of those fancy gaming PCs with LEDs all over the box, and there are some games that override like the LED color for certain sure. effects. Like it turns them all red if you're like low on health. The, you probably uh, mess with someone's head with that. I, I, I heard rumblings that uh, one of the ideas for Hideo Kojima's Silent Hills was going to be a EULA that you agreed into that <laughs> allowed you to. I don't know if this could ever legally happen, but it would allow the game to tap into various networks in your house and say if you had some sort of smart lighting <laughs> uh, that the game could impact lighting in your house. Uh, you would give the game your phone number. The game could impact wow. ringtones on your phone, could, could change things like that. Again, all that sounds like a, 
a, a meeting people have, and it's like, there's no dumb ideas. Just throw things at the wall. And it's like, ah, yeah. Norman Reedus comes to your house and punches you. Yeah. Um, but uh, it feels like that's kind of the next evolution. <laughs> I, I think that Kojima won't be satisfied until he can legally like stalk you for a few weeks as the game's <laughs> yeah. coming out. Until he can, <laughs> yeah, he forces you to go in his soul sucker machine. Um, but uh, sticking with Dredge, uh, yeah, so you mentioned uh, the inventory system, which was the thing yes. that I thought of as well. The Resident Evil 4 style inventory system, mm -hmm. uh, where you uh, rearrange stuff Tetris style into a grid. Good. Although, um, yeah. I think the game that did that in a slightly more interesting way that came out recently was Backpack Hero. Did you play that? I didn't play one. it. No. A lot of people have been recommending it to me recently. I don't know if it just hit a new platform or something, but... It just you know. came out. I think it was big on yeah. HIO. Oh, gotcha. It's interesting. It's a sort of um, Slay the Spire style roguelike sort of affair where you advance through a dungeon and have different encounters. But the twist is, you like the main mechanic is that you've got a grid style backpack that you stick in the pack with things. Uh, and where you place things in your backpack has subtle effects. Mm -hmm. Like you might have a weapon that says um, uh, every single object positioned underneath this in your backpack conveys an extra point of damage. Gotcha, gotcha. Or you've got a helmet that says uh, how, the, how you get more armor points based on how high up this is in your inventory. Oh. Yeah. So, so you really have to really deeper than things. just fit everything into this space. Yeah, and uh, like the, yeah. Dif the different abilities interact. Like they got an artifact that increases the damage of every uh, weapon that it's next to. But then you've got another artifact that increases the damage of the weapon as long as the weapon... But then the weapon causes the weapon to move upwards the space. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have to sort of juggle things in the most into the most optional optimal positions. And you can, uh, yeah. which, I, which I appreciated because I remember after Resident Evil Five came out, they sort of ditched the Tetris inventory management for just a flat nine spaces, and each space can have just one thing, which could be either a herb or an entire gun. And uh, you lost all that strategic placement sure. of things. It's yeah. got a strategic expansion too, because it's like pick where you, if you want to expand your backpack vertically or horizontally. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you ever do the wizard? Oh, I found that way too complicated. Oh yeah, the uh, the magic ability where you have to sort of network magic items yeah, together. Yeah, I was like, oh, oh you like create fun. a conduit almost. Yeah, no, yeah. that's exactly what it that's is. Interesting. Creating conduits. Yeah. On top of everything else, I was like, I'm gonna stick to warrior. That is just that is confusing. Yeah, and one one of the things I liked in Dredge was uh, you would get the God, I, I can't remember the exact specifics. Wasn't it like certain items or certain fish that were like cursed? And if they yeah. were in your inventory too long before you sold them, they would start like impacting and the curse would spread to other objects in your environment or like things would eat other things in your backpack. Um, yeah. I like games that, that do that. There was, what game was I playing recently that someone gives you something and it turns out you have a bomb in your inventory? And, oh, that's Metal Gear, I think. <laughs> Like yeah. <laughs> you get your pack back and you get a bot and there's like a bomb in it. You don't realize that you need to like get rid of the bomb somewhere. Um, a bomb. A bomb. Yeah. Uh yeah, I always think that's that's pretty neat. I like the Oh damage. my god, JC, a bomb. Bomb. I like the damage, like if your boat uh hit in a weird way, you, now you can't use that Tetris space. Uh yeah. So yeah. maybe you lost a fish or maybe you just ruined your engine type thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's sort that of that's that sort of how deep. some of the like the enemy abilities in Backpack Hero works. They'll um They'll infect you with like a like a, a slime that you have to place on one space and that multiplies every turn until you get rid of it. They've come a long way with that game. Yeah. Did yeah. you play any of the DLC, Frost? Dredge? No. Yeah. We, we I don't kinda, know. We've got like different job, you know. <laughs> Started <laughs> a new job. Oh, you, you know. did too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Haven't had time to play it's as wild. much as I would like. Uh, no, never mind. I, I, I would like to. Crazy. Crazy how yeah. we've all started new jobs recently. Yeah. All right. Um, what else do we want to bring up? I'll just keep uh, going down your list. I still got a right, bunch, but uh, I want to hear Street Fighter list. 6, June 2nd. The accessibility that even the playing field between thinking fighters and execution fighters, that was just the biggest thing for the longest time. Of yeah. Like, because the, there's a ranked mode, and uh, they always take it. It's like you're either – your mechanics are great, but you suck at thinking. You have no strategy, and you just get away on pure execution alone. Or you're a great thinker, but you're cack-handed, so you, you also can't do much of anything else. So really, even that out. But I, I say it's standout because it did it while not being awful. It's still fun yeah. to use. I remember saying in my review, it was a small thing, but I appreciated that they called it modern mode. 
when <laughs> another game might have called it, you know, easy Baby mode, mode or yeah. training mode for babies. What was the old? What was the old one called? Like, was it traditional? Yeah, I think it was just classic mode versus modern mode. Yeah, no, I, I can't, couldn't do it. I need. I was like, ah, give me the classic. I was raised on this stuff. Oh my god, my like hands well, were shaking. Uh, another thing I said at the time was that you know, if you were make, if you were inventing fighting games today, would you incorporate like every that weird thing where every character's abilities have different bespoke? Uh, weird combinations of button prompts, or would you just do it like Smash Brothers, where everyone just puts the same inputs for the same, yeah, uh, but it, have a different special attacks to the inputs? Yeah, it almost seems like those archaic, like you know, uh, quarter circle X, half circle Y is um, the way things are. Is the way things are. Like, there's no reasoning behind it other than that's the way it's always been. Which um, I guess you could say that's uh, that's ultimately elements of a lot of genres that have been it around for a long time more input is the thing it goes because like for street fighter every input plus a button in eight directions is a thing you know and mm -hmm. sometimes even just pressing the button is its own input and putting a different one would do a different thing so allowing that is uh, like now we've got 10 20 abilities that you can do if you're making these funky janky moves um rising thunder try to simplify it but then it literally was just like three moves yeah. Just three moves, rock, paper, scissors, got really boring. Made by the same guy, Seth Killian, I want to say. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Street Fighter. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm actually amazed that they pulled this one off. And I go, wow, that's, it's still fun. You still have footsies. You still have the basics. Good on you. Love those footsies. Um, one from earlier on in the year that we didn't bring up, which I know um, Yazzie's not a huge fan of, uh, was for me, Pizza Tower, the uh, structure, the mirrored structure of levels. Uh, and I know a lot of that's pulled from the WarioWare or Wario Land mm -hmm. games, but I love that the first half of a level is you taking your time, learning the layout, exploring for secrets, and then as soon as you hit that endpoint, it is a mad rush to get back through what you did. Mm -hmm. And uh, it kind of reminds me of the the way the way they were able to take a single location and and present it in two completely different ways reminded me of how like the run through a level in hotline Miami feels like one thing and then needing to mm. leave the level and sort of yeah. come to terms with what you've done. And like the silence of that feels like something else. Although that's completely inverted where like the first half of a level is, is relatively calm in pizza tower. And then the back half is uh, madness that relies on, you know, what you've learned. Yeah. It's so, yeah. a cool idea. I don't have a problem mm. with pizza tower. I just found it a little bit too stressful uh, sure. to, for my, for my liking. That those back halves are very stressful. Feels, we'll say. Yeah, yeah, it reminds it reminds me of my time cooking short order. It was great. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, you need a cigarette after each run. <laughs> yeah, I did have them on honorable honorable mentions uh, just for nailing themes with mechanics. It just feels like the slickest, greasiest platformer I've ever played, where you have a mm. firm footing and no footing at the same time. It's it's mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah, this cost in there. I'm gonna say, yeah, July 18th, viewfinder. Yeah, I think that kind of speaks for uh, yes. Not so much like a single mechanic in a game as just one game that's one big mechanic. Yeah, but like that watermelon puzzle, beauty. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it uh, certainly is unique. But uh, as I said, sort of the super liminal problem where you, you can't really take lessons from that for game design going forward. It's one good idea. They did got as much as they could out of it, and uh, that's about it. Yeah, I've never seen that used elsewhere. Really unfortunate. Oh, yeah, and that that, that oh. kind of feels like storyteller to me. Where I, when I look back, I'm gonna look back. I think I'm gonna look back on viewfinder and storyteller fondly because of those like really interesting kernels and mm. maybe like really great first impressions um, that can't quite withstand the 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 weight of the finished product. Yeah, it brings into two different things because I love those where it's like this will never go into anything else. But I also, um, I guess. Last Hero of Nostal Gaia. I don't know if either of you played it. It was that satirical oh, souls like. Oh yes, yes, I have played that. This yeah. the souls like that was, you know, trying to be a bit meta and mm -hmm. uh, sa satirical, as you yeah. say. I thought like it failed on all accounts except this one thing where the item would have the lore as Souls games do, but if mm. you could take it to where it, the lore was pointing you to, it would evolve your item. And I was like, yeah, that was. I, I, I remember that. That was pretty cool. That. Yeah, but that was from 2022. Uh, oh, yeah. the, uh, I haven't even heard of this game. I had to review it. Yeah, it was a bit obscure. Yeah, there's it's a, it's a thing. Um, that's almost like a lesson on satire you could give later on, Yats. <laughs> I 
shouldn't give lessons on satire. I mean, I could tell you the difference between satire and parody. Well, there you go. There's a, there's a what See, do we call uh, now? Semi ramblematic. In my book, parody is uh, usually done out of affection for the subject, whereas satire is more commonly uh, used to criticize or deconstruct the subject. It's, like Watchmen. It, Watchmen is a satire of superhero comics. It's intended sure. to criticize them. It does. But, the, uh, you know. Um, my friend Pablo? I think that's what the game was called. Uh, yeah. My friend Pedro? Uh, my friend yeah, Pedro. Pedro. Yeah, the, uh, if you know I it's it wasn't bad, Pablo. <laughs> it's a Mexican name with a P. It's, uh, yeah, the, uh, if you know it's bad, why are you doing it? That felt like too much of the last hero of Nostalgia, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. And, also, uh, for a very long time, I just assumed that word was nostalgia because I got the first five letters and I was like, I assume the rest is nostalgia. And then I just looked at the Steam page and I was like, no, that has a Gaia at the end of it. Yeah, that, be alive. It, it's, it's a bit. They're doing a bit. Oh, um, I love a bit. What would you say pissed? Do you remember the game pissed? P-Y-S-T? Oh, yeah. Was like that a parody mist. or was that, that a, It was like mist, but it was pissed. Well, it was pretty was, clearly a uh, fairly fair? cheap parody. Oh, parody. Of, okay. Uh, mist. Okay, just wondering. I, I think the difference is that a parody uh, doesn't aspire to be better than its subject uh, or above its subject. Mm. That's a good way of putting it. I feel it. There you go. Yeah. Lovely. Oh, so October 17, Mosolina. Uh, a hostile interpretation of the immersive sim. I thought it was pretty, like, there, there's some mechanics that I say innovate. There's others that it's like, all right, back to basics now. Um, yeah. This is like your, your tunics, so to speak. Where it feels like yeah. the Lost Zelda game. I'm like, yeah, I, I like like just because there was a leap in advancements from this tech to this tech, maybe we could still find some of the smaller iterations. Like, sure, why not? Yeah, it's a as you say, most Lena certainly feels like, hey, all this here's all this stuff we've been working with. Let's strip things down and get right back to the nuts and bolts of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, love it. And then you guys probably have more to say on this one. Cocoon, October 25th. Ah, the yes, Cocoon. Cocoon, the uh, in new indie game by the Limbo and uh, Inside bloke, uh, which I was taking for like a fairly bog standard, you know, moony eyed, zero dialogue indie game sort of thing, until you get to the bit where you l jump out of the current world you're in, and uh, the game becomes about uh, rearranging these spheres that take you into different worlds and uh, placing them in the worlds themselves to create these weird sort of circular Mobius strip paths from one world to another to, in order mm -hmm. to solve puzzles. And I thought it was jolly interesting. Yep, I agree. I also think it uh, did, a, did a great job of, I think a lot of puzzle games, you hit a puzzle and then you start overthinking things and you're like did i miss something in a previous room where like what like how much information do i need to keep in my head which is something you know portal does really great because it's like nope you're in this room everything you need is in this room and cocoon does a really great job of not only kind of closing off environments so that you know everything you have but its mm. sound design and its music slowly has a crescendo as you start doing things correctly and it's almost this like subconscious like um kind of like cheering you on of like yes yes this is right this is right and you're you're hearing it in the sound design which um i was i was really impressed by i love that game also didn't outstay it's welcome give me a yeah night, i love nice that, I love that sort of thing game. i love that sort of thing where mechanics uh, you don't notice till they're pointed out but when you mm -hmm. when they are pointed out you realize uh how subtly important it was it's a lot of sound design, right? Sound design is a thing where if it's yeah. doing its job right, it goes uh, unnoticed, and if it's doing its job poorly, then we criticize it. Yeah, that's my always been my experience. Mm -hmm. I, thought, I thought it was crazy because we were playing Planet of Lana earlier in the year, and I go, I feel like there's nowhere that that style like Limbo and Inside the move to the right em ups. Um, I feel like there was nowhere that that genre could continue going except for like increase the cinematic effect of it. So like, mm. uh, brand, was it? Uh, Bramble. Bramble Mountain or something like that. Yeah, yeah Mountain and, King. Uh, Planet of Lana. I was like, these they can just only get prettier, essentially. But no, uh, Cocoon. I like, I mean, I Cocoon liked, feels uh, like a Zelda dungeon to me more than any of that. Because Cocoon is like a big sprawling, like a well-made Zelda dungeon, which is, I think, one of the reasons I really yeah, like it. Sort of with, but with sort of like uh, portal mechanics. Mm -hmm. well, if you like, uh, yeah, side on, uh, limbo stroke inside platformer type thing. I really enjoyed American Arcadia. Uh, yeah. Although that didn't have any like new mechanics or anything, but it was a yeah. sort of uh, 
quick keep running to the right platformer uh which did some interesting things where it was mingled with sort of a first person game as mm. part of the plot you were playing like switching between two two different characters one of them in platform world one of them in first person world and there's one bit where you have to um where you're playing as uh the first person character who has to sort of navigate a difficult conversation with their boss at the same time as having their monitor up with the other character on and you have to like guide them through like a stealth section at the same time oh that's interesting I wish the game had, I wish the game had done more stuff like that. It's like the one time the two like gameplay systems cross over. Otherwise, it's just switching back and forth. Yeah, that feels... Uh, you Just a few weeks ago, I think that game came out, and you were like, has anyone played it? And we were all like, no, because we <laughs> all we separately started new jobs. Um, but it feels like that and Talos Principle are two games of the last few weeks that uh, have been sort of underappreciated because of coming out at the end of a crazy marathon sprint that was this um, year. Funnily enough, both games I'm going to be covering in fully ramblematic sooner rather than later. Look at you, I've got my, maker. Yeah, I'm doing Talos Principle 2 this week because, as you say, that's another game that does really good stuff with puzzles. Really good, like, deceptively simple puzzles. Like, you go Would in you... and there's, like, two or three elements and you're like, oh, this seems obvious enough. And then you try to take the most, like, direct approach and then go, oh, wait, there's this one element we have to work around that's going to make this, like, nine times more complicated than we thought. Yeah. Would you say there's any, uh, without you know playing too much of the hand of your review, was there anything in Talos Principle that you think like had a singular standout mechanic, or was it more of just a sum of its parts? I think it was a sum of its parts situation. It's uh, it's uh, really well told. There's a, there's a huge amount of detail in the writing that I appreciated. Mm -hmm. uh, puzzles almost feel like the lesser element compared to the uh, storytelling and setting. Yeah, I played it a bit uh, in that tutorial world. I was like, fuck, it's more of that first one. <laughs> but yes, it, it moved the, on from that. That's that's the trick it pulls early on. It's like, it's like wait, did I accidentally play Talos Principle 1 instead of Talos Principle 2 oh, that's when I first I felt, started that game? I felt playing Talos Principle the first time. Everyone's like, oh, it's amazing. It's the best game ever. I was like, I feel like I played the wrong game. Oh, the wrong kid sure. died. The wrong um, kid died. <laughs> did... Uh, is there anything else on your calendar? I still got, uh, I still see, got a bunch of got those. some honorable mentions. Hanging I feel chats. like most people won't have seen these. I've got like uh, Crime Boss, Rock K City. It was so shit it crashed, but then it uncrashed. That's the first time I've ever seen that. That's uh, amazing. What does that mean? Like <laughs> Jesse was playing with us, and he's like, my game crashed. And then out of nowhere, like if it just fixed itself without him doing anything, I was like, "Oh, so we love it when uh -huh. Kojima does things like that, but when Crime <laughs> Boss Rock A City tries to do it, Kojima didn't make a game this year yet. We still have the Game Awards in about seventy-two hours. Yeah, Stealth drop. You, you never know. Yeah, uh -huh. hey, a little Christmas Keely time. Christmas gift. Yeah, it's uh, Diablo Four uh, monetization scheme so predatory that it's banned in Belgium and the Netherlands and is constantly the face of lawsuits. That's uh, you got to give my hand for that. I see where these honorable mentions are. But then there's Exo Primal, which was just like good old yeah, throw those dinos at me, have at it, why not? That's like <laughs> Marvel Avengers nonsense. Uh, Pokemon Sleep, fun and in innovative ways to track me while I sleep. Um, Venba, I don't know if I would like. It's not like it's done anything new. I just really liked, enjoyed that quick little story mechanic where it is um, open-ended cooking, almost because it'll give you oh. it'll give you your grandmother's recipe book, but it, its parts are smudged or missing because it's been handed down for a while, and then it'll it'll go okay now try and figure out the recipe decipher this so to speak, but and you can solve it simple in a simple way, but then there's the like. Oh, you can try again and do it a better way. So this time, like the non bread comes out better, or the the doses come out crispier, or something like that. I was like, that's interesting. Oh, at the very hmm. least, if nothing else. Yeah, so not much on that. Um, so it's like the Bake Off, where they give them the ingredients, but and only like really vague instructions. Yeah, I like, can yeah, make a make a cake. Yeah, I wish there, there'd been more of that, but again, like fun little. It's it's a cooking drama that never states welcome. Cooking drama. That's not uh, what that game's called. No. They should make that again. They need to remake <laughs> this cooking drama. Yeah, it's a cooking, not cooking mama. No, cooking drama sounds <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah, it's, cooking it's mama cooking got divorced, drama. and it's a cooking drama. Uh, I mean, yeah, this deals with immigration. Why not? <laughs> yeah. So, um, ooh, a little puzzle. And, and, then, and then a weird science fiction object appeared in the sky, and it became a cooking rama as well. Oh, oh that was a good one. Oh it never ends, does it? Uh, November, no, August 3rd. 
Word Factory. Have you guys seen that? I did play that. You know what? It reminded me of a game I made called The Magic Poo Machine. I wonder uh, where, like so much. where you had to like create a, a, a sort of Rube Goldberg machine that uh, moves things to the right place at the right time. Yeah, it's quite fun. Yeah. Uh, what, your game or Word Factory? I'm talking about Word Factory, yes. Okay. Because my, my game wasn't quite as, as well put together. There you go, yeah. Yeah, no, it, it is just that where it'll give you like a, a normal piece and then you can make this contraption that bends this piece to make different letters. And uh, I never yeah. made it through the whole thing, but it was quite engaging. Uh, I think that that's me. I come from like Flash game backgrounds. So I like games that just take one mechanic and it's like, how can I just bend this over and over? Sometimes quite literally. Let me see. Uh, Yellow Taxi Go Room. You didn't play this. Marty might have touched on this game. It yeah. is the most strangely explosive, like Fast and Furious, Crazy Taxi, Mario 64 game I've ever felt. It is if Mario I was did, a car. I think I did try this one. This was just the one that was in like the future city, the way you could fly. No, that was, I believe, Mile High Taxi. That, was, that one was oh. just like Crazy Taxi. This oh. is like a 3D platformer where you play as a car. No, I don't think I played this one. No. Yeah, you, you need some good control on this. I recommend playing on a controller. It feels like the opening of Too Fast, Too Furious, where he's just like going through 50 gears to try and get as much control as possible. Let me see what I got here. Uh, Tamarack Trail. Marty and I tried that out. It's mm -hmm. interesting because it's Slay the Spire, but now it's uh, really leaning into the dice mechanic where yeah. you can craft craft your dice, have them knock into each other. You can you get activate extra moves and damage for having them knock into each other. Um, good stuff all around there. And then to finish that one off for me, honorable mention, most dominant mechanic every year, always, gun. Any game that's got <laughs> guns in it, scroll with a gun. Pal World, that's Pokemon with guns that's going to come mm -hmm. out. Wizard with a gun came out, which is just like don't starve together, but it's a gun. You're, cra you're <laughs> crafting with a gun. You're harvesting with a gun. And, of course, uh, Rusted Moss, which is a grapple hook Metroidvania with a gun. Love it. Is that a just, gun with a, just with a gun. Cooking yeah. Mama with a gun. Cooking that's that's cooking drama right there. It's <laughs> <an> absolute <laughs> cooking right, drama. Yeah. Uh, I, had a, I had a couple more individual ones. Uh, a mix. So the two that go together are pineapple on pizza and Suica game. And it's because they both do one thing, one incredibly simple thing, and they do it very well. And pineapple on pizza is a is like an eight minute joke with a punchline. Yeah. And that was a uh, very effective punchline. Like when it when it pays yeah. off at the end, I was like, Oh, yeah. oh, it's, you, oh you got me, pineapple on pizza. Very clever, and it's just eight minutes in and out of your life. Uh, and then uh, Suica game, which is a, a puzzle game I've been banging on about, uh, is it is the most like Spartan game. It is just one mode. They had a second. They had a Smart. Halloween skin that they removed from it, which I was like incredible. Like you were able to play it looking spooky, and then they patched that out, and they're like it is no longer spooky season. Um, but it is just a. It's just. A little bit of Tetris, a little bit of threes, uh, a little bit of uh, a Poyo Poyo. Um, yeah, and it's, it's, the new, it's the new Flappy Bird, isn't it? And there's like 900 ripoffs on Steam now. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's because yeah. the only official one is just on Switch, which is madness yeah. to me that there's just not, a, not they don't port Suica a game to anything else because it's only $3. Um, yeah. But it also only has like a 60 second song and you hear it looped ad nauseum but it's so good mm. also this week is the i believe the third anniversary of suica game so hbd suica game hmm. uh, yeah. it only came here like a month or two ago but it was third anniversary in asia 20 um, it's the kawaii 2048 uh exactly <laughs> Kauai 2048 um I really like the scrapbook in season a letter to the future and i don't know if i yeah. liked it i like it with distance mm. Yeah. I don't know if I liked it in the moment, but I like the idea that that game is about trying to, like, the world is moving on from this time period. And they're kind of vague about what's going on, if there's going to be a flood, if if everyone's going to forget what happened. But you are your job is to kind of chronicle the, the memories of this um, specific place and the people who live there before yeah. the world moves on. Yeah, see, I find I've got increasingly less patience for indie games that just say, do whatever you want. Play it your yeah. way. Me? I'm like, bitch, challenge me. I, I came to your restaurant, to, I, serve me food. Challenge me, challenge me to fill in this scrapbook in the specific way yeah. that will set off the uh, trigger that calls me a good boy. 
That's what I want. I want, to see interesting, I want to see interesting game mechanics. If I want to just like piss about, I'll get a piece of paper and doodle on it. Oh, but the art is so pretty. I like pissing about. Give me more piss about simulators. Um, There's tons of those. What, uh, Invincible came out this year. Um, oh, that's a little too much. There's, oh. too much. there's not enough pissing about on that. Oh, oh there's a too fair amount pressure. of piss. There's a fair amount of pissing about. But I like the like good the good vibe Scorn? pissing about. Just oh, has okay. good vibe. How did you? What did you guys think of climbing in the year of our Lord twenty twenty three? Just in Jacinth, yeah, yeah. it's pretty good in that. I think that game sort of lost interest in itself at the end and just went, "Hey, space whales!" But I love, uh, I love a nice that's the best whale. part of it. <laughs> yeah, it was it was pretty fun while it lasted. Yeah, it was. Um, I a few others. I uh, I know Yahtzee will call it uh, uh, lower tier Mario, and then we'll mute his mic. But uh, Mario Wonder, I think the Wonder Seeds. Uh, allow the team to um. really go with like a kitchen sink approach to creativity to be like in this one instance we're going to completely change how you think about this game and how you play this level and it's not a theme we need to stick to for the rest of the game it's not the cape or yoshi it's not the cat suit it is something that we can just deliver to you once and then move on with it um and i think that that um sort of emboldened a lot of uh, creativity in the team in the 2d space which we don't see a lot of in 2d platforms it's hard to it's hard to be creative in a genre that's been around for 40 years well fair enough um Shall we uh do we want to wrap things up and hurry along to super chats well i got yes. i got a few i got a few more just a few more and then i'll be done okay. and then i'll shut up and then we're going to chat so many supers uh the act of right, time just... lore in final fantasy 16 okay um which was the game's way of sort of providing you an interactive Wikipedia at any time, at any, any time a character is talking uh, or at any moment in the game, you can hit the, 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 the middle button on the PS5 controller and it opens up a little map that says these, this is who the characters are in this scene. This is who there are. This is their relationship. This is where you are. This is a yes, place yeah, in the world. I preferred the execution of that in Pyre where every time there was a significant element in the appeared in the dialogue, the text would just turn red and you just mouse over it and there'd be a that little tooltip nice. explaining who that was and what was yeah. going on. Yeah, yeah. But the ones that did it first was Amazon Prime, where you could just pause and it's like, who's this guy on screen? And I'm like, oh yeah, this <laughs> is this great. Actor? This, this also, they did it. <laughs> um, the uh, making of Karateka. Did you get a chance to futz around with that at all, Yahtzee? Did you, mm, do you care about Karateka, not. the Jordan Mechner game? The Pre Prince of Persia? No, no, I only really played Prince of Persia back in the day. So I know I he also did Karateka, yes. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I never played Karateka. I don't care about Karateka. Uh, but the way this is an uh, interactive documentary is fascinating. Um, it is ostensibly a documentary on the making of Karateka. And as you watch it, you are interacting with it. And it gets to certain points where you can play the early build. And when they are talking about something, you can play through the thing as they are talking about. It feels like a genuine evolution of um, kind of the Valve uh, interactive commentary, which is something I wish more games had, because I think that's I pretty know, cool. Learning more makes about the think, way things are. Yeah. Makes me think of the beginner's guide for some reason. Uh, like that, yeah, yeah, honestly. Yeah. And even like I know everyone's rolling their eyes at the fact that The Last of Us 2 Remastered is coming out on PS5 next month. And understandably, if you're rolling your eyes, uh, they're oh, including... Nice. Uh, work in progress levels and cut levels in the game in like sort of boxy form that you can play, which I think is cool. I think sort of empowering us to see behind the curtain and to see, you know, work in progress, unfinished things uh, is something I wish more developers would do, honestly. Um, although I just wish with Karateka, I wish it was in a game I cared about more. Uh, and then the the my last point was it's interesting how many games I really liked this year that I didn't really have a standout mechanic of, and I think that's because this game or this year had so many sequels and remakes, mm. um, stuff like Pikmin Four, uh, Resident Evil remake, uh, Mario RPG, uh, Persona Five Tactic, uh, games I'm really enjoying or enjoyed, but just don't have a single thing that stood out. I like the wingsuit in Spider Man Two. That honestly, might be the thing I like the most. In you like Man Persona 2. 5 Tactica? I honestly really not liking that at all. I don't know if I like it. I like spending time with my pals. And I don't yeah, like there's playing not the much. There isn't much of that in Persona 5 Tactica. There's no like, uh, real world uh, piss about element that previous Persona 5 games have had. That is, that is very true. I mean, I liked Strikers because it had that whole tour of Japan going on in the real world side of things. But Tactica is just like one metaverse fight after another, and frankly, I just don't like the combat much. 
and as a someone who's not crazy about tactics, um, I'm going through it because I want to. I want to make sure my boys are okay at the end. I want to make sure Ryuji's fine at the end and that he, he gets through this in one piece. I think they've oversaturated the Persona Five spin-offs. I think, I don't care anymore. I'm like, how many bloody struggles for the heart of the human soul have these poor kids had to deal with in like a single year of their lives? Next year is going to be eight years. It's all in a year. Oh my god. Yeah, they've had a year. They like, had know, a like, year. Is it the same people? I thought there was it's just the like, same crew. Oh the P five yeah. people, the same crew. That was, They're all adolescents. I thought it was more like Harry Potter. Yeah. We're like next I'm year like, and next year. No, no. Persona like three I'm, and four have different characters, but all the Persona five characters, they've been dancing, they've been fighting, they've been they've been doing a lot. Yeah, uh, they had those Q spin offs, whatever they were. Yeah, little chibi characters. Wacky stuff. Uh, on that note, I think we can go um, to Super Chats. Uh, I'll be reading them out today because Yahtzee uh, did a lot of uh, recording over the weekend for his audio yes. book. Plug, plug. Uh, yes, you people who keep asking about it, I'm recording uh, the audio book for uh, We'll Leave the Galaxy for Good, which will be coming out next year. Uh, should have it wrapped up uh, in next weekend's recording sessions, but it does mean my voice is a little bit overworked right now. So Marty's going to read out the super chat. It's your money maker. Both of your voices are your money maker. We can run what? mine ragged. It doesn't matter. You guys, you, we got to keep that chocolate and vanilla. I'm not <laughs> what sure what you? that meant. Matt, welcome to the Green Gang. Matt, welcome. Uh, thank you so much, Matt. And Mark Devis uh, with a 4.99 pound dono. Thank you so much, Mark. Uh, any news on getting the Adventures Night IP or a second win D and D series? Like a lot of us, I need more Jack Packard in my life. Love you guys, XO XO XO. This is still something we can't really talk about. Yeah. Uh, there are still negotiations underway. Uh, watch this space. You'll yeah. hear something soon, probably. Yeah, and we can promise you that in some way, shape, or form, we will be doing a live play D and D series in the future and you will see more jack packer jack packer is just doing a lot of behind the scenes stuff he's doing just a lot of adult mm. work that i'm gonna be honest i'm glad yes. i don't have to do he's barely yeah. had time to take his big boy pants off yeah, no he's just... talking to lawyers he's getting incorporated oh my god he big knows so business much. jack he knows so much he's just jack he's been jacking it i'm gonna be honest he's been jacking it so hard this jack month and i'm so proud of him uh voitech welcome to the tip jar welcome voitech we're proud to have you here uh dale mallows uh with a 507 uh don't know thank you so much good morning here are your dumb and funny words of the week obelis collingwood twat grundle and discombobulate keep it up gents i don't like when i say the word twat really, i don't, like how don't say it right yeah i don't like how yeah. i say it no, i just don't say it's it. twat twat yeah twat. Well, there you go but you don't call it a SWAT team. You call it a SWAT team. <laughs> okay. Colin but, Farrell uh, wasn't in a movie called SWAT. <laughs> letters are pronounced differently based on context. I, I'm worried that you don't seem to have noticed that in your time using English. Words of jazz. Skibbity pop pop pop. Words with friends. Yeah. Uh, words with friends. Vulgar display of gaming with 10 Australian dollars. Thank you so much, Vulgar. This is for Frost's amazing last cold take. Such a great video. You really outdid yourself. Frost. Talk a little bit about the your cold takes that just went up a few hours ago. Out did overspent. I was like, oh, this one almost took me with it. Is yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't want to spoil too much. It's right there. Give them the link. Throw it their way. I'll this go, is the tale as old as time. A it's mother. like it's forty bloody minutes long. Yeah. Forty minutes long. So yeah, you it's won't a beef, get it's five, a beefster. Yeah, that's like four cold takes now. I get four yeah. weeks off. <laughs> is that how it works? Oh no! I don't think that's how it works. No, uh, no. But yeah, watch that video. It's it's um, it's great. It's it, it presents a scenario, does its research, and then gives you a little bit of a little bit of opinion at the end. It's very good. Um, <sighs> excellent. Uh, and then King Dead, welcome to the Tip Jar. Thank you so much, King Dead. And then Captain Seasick, thank you so much for the dono. Seriously, here is some money for the doggo cam. Um, oh well, Toffee sort of slipped off it right now, but oh well, Toffee, you know, Toffee him a, was there. If, Give him a break. He's a sleepy boy. Oh, Ryan Small, welcome to the Green Gang. Thank you so much, Ryan. Great green goo. Welcome to the tip jar. Did you guys see that this dude's making a goo game? This is a oh. weird thing. A guy <laughs> who works for Epic in his in his spare time is making like a yeah. goo or a slime game. Doesn't that look cool? Yeah, he's playing like yeah. a little slime. I mean, graphically, it's very pretty. It hasn't yeah. shown much gameplay. Don't know what yeah. it's going to be, but. I want a game where I play as goo. Yeah, I guess I Carrion was the closest thing to like being goo, but that was more of like amorphous killing blob. See, I yeah. grew up on Spew, which was like uh, from the creators of The Binding of Isaac. Yeah. Oh, Gish. 
There was a that's the one, yeah. Yeah, Gish was the like uh, Evan McMillan's first game back when he was a new grounds luminary. I've never even heard of Gish. Yeah, you can uh, propel yourself with your own vomit. Lovely. If I do. Uh, Darwin's dummy with a two dollar dono. Thank you so much. Gotta support the dog cam, David Dubois with a five dollar dono. It's just dog cam. All in caps. Okay. okay, you know what, Toffee? You're going to have to earn some of this money, but get back Act right up. Jewel. Get, get back up here, you little prima donna. $2 dono. Jackson Jewel, super chat for dog cam. That was great. That was that was wonderful. Uh, Clover and Aeneas, thank you so much for the $5 dono. Tex Murphy, eat your heart out. There's a new detective in town, and his name is Frost. Just watch Cold Take. Well done. Hi, Yachts and Marty. Look at you. you have a you trench coat, Frost. I should get one. Um, see, I'm in Oklahoma. It's super windy. What are you going to do with a trench coat? Don't put it on. Yeah, and, yeah tie like, it up. Button it up. I'm just going like, to walk around. Like, I'll look cool, but then it'll be like like a frog sack. Just... I mean, the problem in trench coats... Well, that's, what, in... that's why trench coats have belts. No. Yeah, but modern trench coats, I just it makes it seem like you're going to go to like a Kmart parking lot and show your doodle to some kids. Yeah, I'm so looking for, for modern ones because I feel like the old ones we can't pull off anymore. They're they're made different. Number one and two, the connotations like you just look like a streaker. You look yeah, like a yeah, yeah, or someone who collects swords. <laughs> Unfortunately, like fedoras has, too. I'm, I'm looking has very carefully. serious and has very serious opinions about Legend of Korra, Legend of Korra, and World War Two. Yeah, yeah. So. That seems like weirdly specific. I feel like something's going on there. Um, John Connor with five Canadian dollars. Thank you so much, John. Spider Man's wingsuit mechanics is going to be the next grappling hook in adventure games, even though it died after Arkham did it years ago. Hey, Just Cause had a wingsuit way before Spider Man did. That is That's true. true. I mean, I mean, admittedly, it didn't have the flying through rings like Superman 64 mechanic. Sure. Uh, I really liked the wingsuit in um, Spider-Man because a lot of going into this, it was like, this is the same city. How are you going to make it feel different? And I did feel like yeah. the wingsuit felt a lot differently and the formation of the, or like the position of those wings, uh, those little wind tunnels, like you said. Um, yeah. Like I said, in my review, I was really expecting not to like it because it, I was afraid it would take away from the web swinging, but it yeah. didn't. It no. had its own little uh, foibles to it. And it helped out because since like the, the entire kind of, eastern half of the map is uh not quite as dense and and tall as uh, manhattan mm. is so it, it makes getting around like queens and stuff feel more interesting which is nice it's funny too good game uh voitech five dollar dono thank you so much voitech uh what game mechanics this year do you see becoming a new trend also dog cam was a great idea yeah do so you see that... anything we talked about uh that's a know. different the, like the ones that really stood out were, were the ones like Viewfinder that I feel like you couldn't put that into other games, really, aside from the sure. novelty. Um, yeah, I think um, the uh, grid-based inventory stuff is going to be remain popular for a while. I think. Yeah, we're seeing it more and more make uh, make a comeback. Um, I'm curious if uh, I know I always bring up Zelda, but like so much of Breath of the Wild has been uh, carried over into a lot of other games in the past six years. I'm wondering if anyone's really going to try kind of the heavy physics and system-based stuff of the mechanics and Tears of the Kingdom. I feel like well, it's going to be less... It'd be nice to, nice to have something like that on a console that doesn't chug <laughs> the way the Switch does. A console that isn't uh, 15 years old at this point. Um, yeah. yeah. I, keep, I keep banking on like Vampire Survivor mechanics being more going getting more into the mainstream but i think the closest it's been so far is deep rock galactic made a little spin-off game that's just vampire survivors so i'm hmm. like huh it's awfully quiet I don't, <laughs> I don't know yeah wondering like is someone yeah is someone really gonna tap into this um one game or a pair of games i guess we didn't bring up uh liza p and lords of the fallen um do you oh, think yeah. anything in either of those games really uh are gonna be moving the needle like what about the umbral lamp that seemed like the cool uh, see it's just, it's just a nice way of presenting old stuff but i think the the interesting thing was staying in the umbral world um everything gets harder but worth more money it's kind of like an interesting way of this whole if it's too difficult go ahead and grind out right like you mm. can grind anywhere so it's almost like a nice little um accessibility feature i would i would call it which is i wouldn't yeah. mind in other games um 
speaking of those two games, Vulgar Display of Gaming, 10 Australian dollars. My favorite mechanic of this year was Lies of P's ability to trigger off my Sekiro PTSD of the eight hour straight spent fighting a headless Yeti. Um... Just, is it Amy in the midst of that PTSD? She's, she's been there for a bit. It's not she's, post. It's just traumatic stress disorder. It it's is mid traumatic stress is, disorder. Yeah, we're in the midst, in the throes of traumatic stress right now. Did you um, beat all that? Yeah, it's Sekiro. Hmm? Did you beat all Sekiro. of Sekiro? Yeah. No, I didn't get around to finishing that. How far did you get? Uh, not as far as the big monkey that everyone keeps talking about. Awful thing. It's. Uh, I had to look it up. Uh, Sekiro boss is ranked like hardest to easiest he's number five so i was like oh strange oh, no. place to put him <laughs> okay <laughs> oh no uh i believe in amy she's a pro gamer uh obsidian watch with a five dollar dono thank you so much obsidian watch uh hey gents good to see you all loved the cold take frost i found some uh, i agreed with and some i had to comment on in the vid keep up the good work lovely thank lovely you. lovely yeah, yeah so love the discussion. Video. Have it in. There. Oh, I yeah. like when videos are about the, or when comments are about the video. I feel yeah. like a yeah. lot of my old, my younger videos were just like Frost voice is cool. It's like, but what yeah. about the video? I'm more I than think... just a voice. <laughs> yes, I'd like to see the comments on fully emblematic sort of get over the fact that it's not zero punctuation anymore, yeah. and go back to talking yeah. about like uh, criticizing me for not liking people's favorite games. How dare you say something mad about the subspace emissary? Uh, Spencer K, uh, twenty dollar dono. Thank you so much, Spencer. Joining in progress. I see the production values increased with toffee cam. Uh, thank you so much, Eric. That is uh, all Eric's doing. Uh, I just finished Frost's uh, ice cold take and really love the deep dive. I agree with your observation that too wide a net was cast on defining games. Yeah, what is a video game? Hey, is really, there a really most? If it's know. a spectrum, there's a game that is more game than other games, and then. One game that is almost not game. What do you think the most game is? What, what's the what's the most yeah, game? Yakuza, no. Resident Evil Four. Resident Evil Four is the most game. <laughs> yes, it is the most game. That is a lot of game. Resident Evil Four is is several game. Uh, Pepper Blood with a, a two forty nine euro dono. Thank you so much, Pepper Blood. Happy Monday, y'all. Have a fantastic week. Thank you so much. Well, Pepper Blood. I like that sort of super chat because we could just blow it off and move straight on to the next without wasting one, too much time. Yeah. Uh, it was funny that you commented on that, and then I commented on the comment, and the time ended up getting wasted. But we'll talk. You about know, that. I like comments like that. I do. Yeah, the comments are nice. Does really? it remind you? Is there any games that it reminds you of? Moving uh, on. <laughs> Beast March. Five dollar dono. Thank you so much, Beast March. Uh, dono for the puppy cam. Also, Yahtzee. Will you? Speaking of, will you be reviewing the new Yakuza game? I think I realized after I played like a bunch of them that they all sort of blur together in my head. And it's kind of like the Ace Attorney problem in that you really only need to play one and all the rest are just sort of slight retellings of the same shit. Well, especially we've gotten two this year and one is coming out in like two months. Yeah. So we got the one that I... was in like feudal Japanese period. We got the one that was just a Kiryu spinoff. Yes, yeah, so I haven't played that and probably don't intend to. I might play yeah. the Like a Dragon sequel. Yeah, and that's in January where it's like before. Like, but, yeah. But these games can't be real. There's this thing in me, gamer brain, where if a, if a game in a franchise releases too close to itself, I go, those were expansions or offshoots? Like, what, what, what was are it? These have just been the same game. Are these, are these actually like main chunky installments? I mean,. Well, like the the two this year have been ostensibly spinoffs, because um, one was okay. like set in like uh, uh, J uh, feudal Japan, so it was kind of just like a side story. And then this one that just came out was kind of like, here's how one of the two main characters of the upcoming sequel got to that sequel. So like the one in January feels like the next G capital G game in the series. It's sure. like ostensibly Yakuza Eight. Like a dragon just, heat. This reminds me of when Assassin's Creed was like, all right, we're done making games, and then they released the, the was it China, India, and Egypt, or uh, something? Russia, Russia, Russia. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, oh yeah, those little those little two D ones. Yeah, if you yeah. if you make games like that way too close to each other, I just assume they're not real. Assassin's Creed Chronicles, I think they were called. Chronicles, just to work, yeah, just to work yeah. through all the really generic subtitles. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. Oh, uh, Darwin's Dummy with a five-hour dono. Thank you so much. Uh, if you need more air to fill, any standout bad mechanics? Like we everything absolutely Kong, do not need to fill more air. Anything <laughs> in Kong, excessive enemies in Lords of the Fallen, etc. Yeah, I mean, yeah everything here in Kong, all day. Everything in Kong is bad. I'm trying to think of like a single, like in a game I liked this year that like the mechanic was like 
Well, you liked, apparently liked Persona 5 Tactica, and I'm writing my review of that at the moment as it happens. Mm-hmm. And uh, I really don't understand why they included the usual Persona fusing mechanic, like what Persona always has. Yeah. Because enemies don't have elemental weaknesses, and no. it doesn't really matter what, like, uh, a special ability you use on them, they all just have the same effect of getting them out of cover so you can uh, yeah. smack them down. Probably. They have like simple status effects like despair, which makes an enemy run away a little bit, or forget, which makes an enemy forget but to attack. None of that really matters because all the status effects just make them weak to being attacked, and that's yep. the only thing that really matters to for I setting agree. up your uh, all out attacks and shit. It's um, it's definitely lower on the on the on the my personal ranking of the Persona spinoffs. It's definitely below. Like I love Q and I really like Strikers. Um, this is below that. It's above dancing though. I, I haven't one, I haven't I haven't dancing. played Q. I do like Strikers quite a lot. He was great. Q enough. is like a gameplay focused um, and dungeon yeah. crawly focused and building your own maps, which I really like, like the uh, Etrian Odyssey games. But they're on the DS, which are hard to play now. And um, I don't know. I don't. I don't like emulating DS games. I don't think you don't. You don't get the the tactile feel of it. Oh, right. Like you need to play it on the hardware. Uh, Old Hunter with a five dollar dono uh, with a game we somehow didn't bring up at all. Uh, Dave the Diver helped popularize the half roguelite, half management sim game. See Cult of the Lamb and Boyfriend Dungeon. I hope this becomes a growing subgenre. It feels like Dave the Diver had so many mechanics that I can't. Yeah. There's like not one that stuck out, even though I really like Dave the Diver. But like a, a charcuterie, if you will. Yeah. It was. It was a nice little charcut. I think uh, Cult of the Lamb was Cult of the Lamb was way before Dave the Diver, wasn't it? Yes, last year. and before oh, that, that probably... was Moonlighter, and before that was Racketeer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, Racketeer is, like, uh, almost ancient now. Well, I mean, that's... So, yeah. It w- took w- a while, but uh, it's been a thing for quite a while. Wouldn't Hades even be that? Not really. Was that? No, because nothing from out there impacts your hub world, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. it does. As you meet characters, they enter the hub world. Like, well, like you, you see them, but it's it's not like it's doing anything. You're not building up the shops so that you can be more powerful in the dungeons. Yeah, it's it's the dual thing, like Persona, funnily enough, where what you do in one world affects how you do in the other world as well. Gotcha. It feels all interconnected. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Doran Grossman, Naples with a two dollar dono. It's a me, Mardio. It's me. <laughs> Very clever, Doran. Uh, Hunter Roge with a ten dollar dono. Thank you so much. Nothing to add this week. Thanks for the content. Keep up the good work, Hunter. Thank you. That's the kind of comment we'd like. No response. Lizard with a five uh, uh, pound dono. Thank you so much. Spent the last day watching a four hour video from H Bomber Guy and a separate two hour video on James Summerton. So a forty minute video fell short. Yeah, H Bomb really lived up to his name and dropped a bit of a bomb for the last week, didn't he? Did you watch it yet? Yeah, it called out like 15 different yeah. like uh, big name YouTubers for plagiarism. The bit where he was he was uh zooming in on a on a, a photo one guy had put up and it showed the plagiarized video. Yeah. I was like, "What?" <laughs> Cuz yeah, I was on podcast crazy. mode and he's like, "It's right here." I was like, "What the hell is this?" That's that's amazing. Like, yeah, oh. great video. I, I know H bomb. We uh Let's we've go, like yeah. DM'd each other in the past. Just he's, he's popped in the, he's popped in our chats before. Yeah, yeah he's yes. popped in the chat. We should get him on the podcast one of these That'd days. On plagiarism. Great. Fantastic. Yeah. I almost didn't release this cold take when I saw his was four hours long. I gotta made, make it bigger. Made me feel impotent, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh I I've like I've I've said to him before that uh uh, I wish I had his audience because he gets like millions of views every episode, and he pointed I mean, out that I, pro- I probably get the same uh, altogether. He released it. He, I think it's been like a year since that Roblox video, wasn't yeah, it? But, <laughs> so, if, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you were to release one video a year, what do you think yours would be on yet? I don't know. Uh, big chunky topic. It's hard to say. I feel like I've used up all the big chunky topics on like uh, on extra punctuations and such yeah, i feel like you're you're, a, you're a, a grand minstrel of short form you at the end of a year and, you could just review every game of the year it's funny <laughs> like save it all and be like starting with hi-fi rush let's go it's funny in video, in, in video essays i don't feel i could go on for like a two-hour video but controversially uh i prefer writing novels to short stories hmm, yeah it's funny yeah um that uh, for some reason that all reminded me of Hi-Fi Rush. We didn't talk about Hi-Fi Rush in terms of mechanics. 
Well, what, it was. What did it do? Yeah, what did it do new? I mean, besides the fact that it was the rhythm like, battle system, rhythm battle applied to spectacle fighter style hack and slash mechanics rather than any of the previous games that have been yeah. rhythm battle. I guess that's less new mechanic and more of like new combination of familiar mechanics. Yeah, yeah. and with a nice uh, presentation as well. Very nice presentation. Yeah, I'd say like Hi-Fi Rush is the most charismatic of those type of games. Mm -hmm. But like Geno Kids yeah. released a demo this year that is Hi-Fi Rush essentially. Not nearly as much like production elsewhere, but the core of it. I was like, wow, this is like the way people talk about Hi-Fi Rush. That's how I felt about Geno Kids. Geno from Mario RPG? Or a different uh, Gino. Yeah, Probably a different Gino. Though. Probably. It's got to be a different Gino. Uh, Snake of the Garden, uh, speaking of, with a two euro dono. Thank you so much, Snake. H Bomber guy makes me want to celebrate your creativity. Aw. Yeah. I, I, said, I certainly felt uh, better at being a creative after it I just saw It also seems video. like plagiarism is so much work. <laughs> it just seems like it's more work. It's just, it's less work to just come up with it yourself. Well, well, this is his point, actually. He covers this in the video. He talks about, like, people like us, people who are genuinely creative, think it's easy to write, create things, because this is what we do. We're all, like, geared for it. We mm -hmm. don't, we, so we see someone plagiarizing and go, oh, what's the point? Why don't you just write down your own thoughts? But it turns out it's not quite as easy for people who haven't done it as much as we have. Yeah, and then it's like a slippery slope, and then you're like, I gotta release a video every week, and then all of a sudden you just fucking steal yeah, it. No, I said, no to week. the one point where he was saying, like, it's more it's more effort to plagiarize, it's actually less if you have to, if the big brunt of the work is contacting sources, and like, hey, can I, like, that's the part that eats it all up, so I can, I'm not justifying, I can just understand the laziness to where even I go, I'm gonna make this shorter, or I'm not gonna make it at all, because I'm not gonna plagiarize it, but it would be easier if I did. <laughs> So, yeah. yeah. Uh, Gigawatt Fox with a five dollar dono. Thank you so much, Gigawatt. A little bit of a broken record. Intensely curious about your thoughts in regards to Dragon Warrior Monsters, the battle, the Dark Prince. Uh, hey, this game has just come out. I'm pretty sure I'm the only one on here who gives a shit about it. Uh, I've not gotten a chance to play it yet. Okay, I don't it know is. anything about it. Dragon Quest, uh, but the monster series is kind of like a Pokemon critter wrangling. Right. Uh, side side of it, um, yeah. the a couple a couple people I know have enjoyed it. I don't feel like it's gotten glowing reviews. I think coming out in uh, beginning of December again can can be a detriment to trying to get people to have eyes on your on your game. So I feel like a lot of times at the end of the year you get a game that comes out that's just kind of like shoved out the door. Um, oh, it's a good time because of the Steam sales. I feel like a lot of indies yeah. sell when they see the big green fifty percent off. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah uh, no, no thoughts on uh, Dragon Dragon Quest Monsters yet. Um, but maybe if I play it at some point in the near future, I'll talk about it on various shows and whatnot. Uh, Brick in the head with a two dollar dono. Thank you so much. Tell Toffee he's a good boy. Toffee, Toffee, look at me, look at me. You, you're a good boy. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Brick in the head said so. There you go. Thank you, Brick in the head, for creating that <laughs> moment. Uh, Coffee Koala with a four ninety nine pound dono. Thank you so much. Howdy from Windy Edinburgh. My uh, partner and I love your content, and so uh, happy ha Second Wind has had a fab start. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Thank you. Have you ever been to Edinburgh? Edinburgh? Yeah. Yes. It is a city in Scotland. Yeah. I've been playing a Scottish uh, Scottish themed game, Highland Song. Oh, uh, yes. Really yet, but it's, I it's didn't like Scottish. it very much. Yeah. I like it a lot. I think be, I can't oh. talk about it, I guess. I like it a lot. Okay. <laughs> it's so good. It. Skelly Boy. Five dollar dono. Thank you so much, Skelly Boy. Uh, only caught the tail end of this. Looking forward to watching it and the cold take. Keep up the good work, gents. Yeah. Pace yourself. Thank you, Skelly Boy. It's a thing. Yes. Do you, should, should cold take be a single sitter? Or should it be, uh, like, remember when The Irishman came out? They were like, you can actually break it into four separate episodes, even though it's one movie. Oh, well, we 40 put minutes doesn't seem like that long. That's no, like an episode of, like, no, Lost. No, I'm very much, like, sort of one-track-minded, even though it's, like, five tracks at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, they're all, it's a braid, if you will. Uh, Jonathan blew it. Uh, but we've got chapters if that, in there, if you want to go bit by bit. We do. Yeah. There you go. So, uh, well, check that out. Uh, Coffee has left the building. Well... Rest, rest in peace, dog cam. 
uh and fittingly captain seasick thank you so much for the dono here's some more cash for eric appreciation fund keep up the good work you strange invisible cameraman if the production value on this looks any better than it used to which it does that's all thanks to eric so thank you so much eric mm, he hosts them now yeah um well, i don't have to oh so yeah i was about to say more time for the goofs uh doran grossman naples again with a two dollar dono thank you so much in honor of Firelink podcast link the fire or no what kind of sucker links the fire if they know the full story of Dark Souls? But if you always just, replay it, do you always do the, the same thing? I am that Pretty sucker. much. <laughs> I always want to be the Dark Lord and watch all the big uh, penis-headed dudes bowing down to me. I do, is why would I want to? Why would I not want that instead of setting myself on fire? I was role-playing. I was a pyromancer, so I was like, this is just kind of my thing. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is truly in character. Yeah. You think a pyromancer will be like more bloody fire? Jesus Christ, I'm so sick of it. No, it's, I can't get enough of it. Let's go. I like they were talking about how Framp can't be trusted. I don't trust any of those guys. They look weird. I don't like how they look. They that's do look bigoted. Weird. weird. Well, they do look weird. <laughs> I don't think that's weird. Well, maybe um, they think you look weird. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't doubt it. But not in comparison to them. Uh, and uh, in case you guys don't know, uh, Firelink Podcast is uh, we we are launching our new weekly uh, another weekly podcast this week um, Wednesday evening six p.m. Central here on the main channel, uh, and it's going to be Nick uh, Casey and myself. So if you were a fan of Breakout over at um, the Escapist, check that out. Um, we're going to be chatting about uh, the GTA Six trailer, which is going to be revealed tomorrow morning and break the internet, uh, as well as uh, last minute game award predictions and all that jazz. Uh, and then we'll be also doing a live uh, watch along to the Game Awards on Thursday evening. So tune in for that. Plug, plug. Uh, Synth McPoet, McG Poet. Uh, thank you so much for the five dollar dono. A tip for Toffee, the good boy. Toffee I is a good scratched, boy. I just scratched his head off screen. Aww. Uh, and then Robbie Montague with a five dollar dono. Thank you so much. I really loved the butt plug mechanic in chess that showed up this year. Yeah. What's he on about? Oh, you guys didn't hear that. Okay. Yeah, so that was the chess was, champion cheating, right? Yeah, the chess the newest chess champion, I believe, he was cheating and they're like, How could he have done it? <laughs> butt plug. Vibrating. Yeah, it's like a vibration what? butt plug yeah. that What? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, th th this is the legend. I don't think they ever proved it, uh, but he is awfully shy, the lad. Uh, but uh, <laughs> there's this one YouTuber who, who does like madman engineering type stuff who also invents a butt plug for chess. <laughs> To give you moves. But, okay, but how is that cheating? It's just like someone who's like really good at chess in the back room, watching with a hidden camera and sending like vibration signals to tell. The yeah, or like playing through make. the game out using AI and being like, "This is the move to play right now. This is the move to play right now." Yeah, they 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 tend to just use AI. Like just enter the moves and it's like, oh, here's what you do. I don't know how you come up with a code that doesn't just like annihilate your prostate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, please, ah, oh, not the night nope. again. Oh, shot myself. Oh. <laughs> it's like the, uh, like when Res came out, uh, they had like the vibration suit and then the vibration chair that you would sit on and it made the yeah, remember that. by vibrating like that. So think about it. Kojima, we got a new idea for Death Stranding too. Uh, Durain, thank you so much for the dono. Cute dog, pet, pet, pot. Agreed. Cute dog. Uh, okay, I will pet him again. Beautiful. Uh, He's guacamole. impatient for his walk, so hurry up. It's coming soon. It's coming soon. Don't worry, my sweet boy. Guacamole with a $5 dono. Thank you so much. Glad you're all doing well. Question for Yahtzee is your, quote, painkiller with apologies, quote, skit, uh, the canon first meeting between Elizabeth and Dr. Diableri. Uh, sure. Let's go with that. Boom. Canon. Is it Elizabeth from Bioshock? No. This is characters, it's characters from my books. Oh. That, um, trying to show how in they are. Uh, Novels and what? But have any of you read the Yancey Croshaw biography? I don't think you have. <laughs> oh, yes, I saw saw that. I found uh, a very obviously AI written biography of me on Amazon, which is uh, completely factually inaccurate, as AIs tend to be. That can be a uh, that can be a uh, um, a, a Patreon goal. Is you audio reading the audio book of your <laughs> fake biography? Hey, it's uh, still there. How is it I, not taken down yet? Did you, did I don't you know. know. I actually like sent a report myself saying uh, this is obviously AI written and uh, completely factually inaccurate to boot. Did I'll you say it was that. you? 
I I'll probably would have prioritized it. I'll just post it in the uh, in the chat right now, actually. Oh no! There you go. Um, Barbara Streisand is it? Barbara Streisand. Uh, Hunter is tired with a four ninety nine dono. No message, but thank you so much, Hunter. Appreciate it. And then Alex Armstrong, two separate messages. I'll just combine them into one. Appreciate the dono. Uh, uh, Marty and Frost, hope it's okay to ask. Uh, but what are some of your old jobs before joining the Escapist and then Second Wind? And yachts now that ZP is no more. What will you call the Second Wind version of the occasional guide to R word moments in gaming history if you ever make one? Oh, that's funny. It's not letting me post a link. Oh, uh, sorry. What was that? Uh, uh, yes. What will I call the... I don't, I don't know. And like I said earlier, I think Frost's uh, series, Chronicles, probably kind of takes over that particular job of talking about the R-word moments in gaming history. Yeah. yeah, you could send me some if you like, or have your own spot. It was tough enough trying to come up with new ones every time it occurred to me to make one. Right, yeah. Because uh, there was a gap in the release schedule. Like Did you hear the story about the chess dude me. who put a thing up his ass? Oh, that's, that's a good one. Not yeah. really a video game related, is it? It was gaming uh, space. There was a Star Wars chess. <laughs> I played that on the PC. Uh, and then, uh, Frost, what were some of your old jobs before um, getting into this? Uh, farming, construction. I was a cook. Uh, business consultant, marketing. Wow. How old are you? 28. Yeah, you squeezed a lot in. Yeah. Did you start when you were like 14? Yeah, no, yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. I did at 14, and then at 20, I was like, I really got to crank it up because there's there's more you can do and more your body can take in your early 20s than I was like, at 50, I'll, I'll not be able to travel as well. And was, whatever, at 70, so let's just cram it all in now. There's a time. I've always yeah. just sought stability myself. Um, I did uh, grocery store, library, uh, school, newspaper, coffee shop, and then um, games industry. I was grocery store, uh, video game shop, uh, data entry clerk, and uh, then mainly just data entry clerk after that. Library was far found, my favorite job before. Game yeah, like a non-public facing job was uh, the job I found I preferred the most. Yeah. And people like it when you do all their data entry for them, because mm -hmm. they because uh, people who are extroverted get really bored by it. I'll tell you, even when I, I worked I, retail, I was produce. So I could just stay in the back. Yeah, I'd fill in all that data happy as a clam by thinking about my creative projects. Yeah, I was about to say, then you're like kind of working in your head while doing it. I felt exactly. Yeah, because it requires so little of your like higher brain to just enter data all day. Mm -hmm. You can be wherever you want. Absolutely. Uh, just a couple more donos. Solipsism crisis or the 169 euro uh, pound donation. Thank you so much. No uh, message. Appreciate the dono. Solipsism. Uh, mobile with a five dollar dono. Thank you so much. Uh, heard you like super chats that are light on questions. Have a good rest of the day. Will do. Okay. No notes. And uh, then uh, the last one we have for the moment, William Matthews with a five pound dono. Thank you so much. Yachts, will you do a Ramblo on the Talos Principle 2? Remember you saying you enjoyed it. It's in my top three of the year, though Hi-Fi Rush is still my numero uno. You know what, William Matthews? Just because you asked, I'm going to do a fully ramblomatic of Talos Principle 2 this very week. We were tossing out the thing we had originally. You're going to yeah. put it together in the next 48 hours. Perfect. Because I, there's just something about you I find compelled to obey, William Matthews. I think it's the I think it's the, the last name Matthews. Is I think it's the money. <laughs> I think it's the money. I think it's the money. Yeah, it's the money in his pocket. Give, it, yeah. give it me money. Yeah, I am an yeah. enormous whore. Yeah. That's exactly how it works. Exactly. Just make it rain. I'll do whatever the hell you want me to do. <laughs> uh, no, that, and then... no, that was obviously the review I was always going to put out this week. Mm. Asshole. Um... Who'd you just call an asshole? <laughs> everyone. And, the everyone. Yeah, and then Solipsism again with a 169 no no. Thank you so much, Solipsism. No message, but we just appreciate it. Well, it got, the message got retracted. I don't know what's happening over there, Solipsism. You can just write uh, a message and I'll just read it out if you want. You don't need to even pay at this point. You've paid a couple times. Um, at the moment, that's it for Super Chats. We did hmm. it, guys. Hey. Yeah, Yahtzee, uh, what, uh, what, what do you got going on the rest of the week? What should, what should folks check out in your neck of the woods? Oh, did I, did, did I mention I've got a review of Telos Principle 2 coming out in Fully Ramblematic on Wednesday? I did not hear that. Whoa, Matthew uh, but, quick. But on the same day, I'll be uh, doing uh, Yeti Yahtzee Tries 
stream. I think we're going to play some uh, Lethal Company this week, so we'll, I'm going to be gathering some allies before I venture mm -hmm. forth there. Oh. Yeah, the hot, that's the hot new multiplayer game. Yeah. Well, we, are, we have decided, incidentally, that Yahtzee Tries is going to have its edited highlights video out every two weeks, because we thought, like, combining two streams for the last one that we put out on Friday uh, made for a, a nice, meaty video for everyone mm -hmm. to enjoy. That was nice. Yeah. So we'll be sticking with that for going forward. I've also got a, a semi ramblematic coming out this week on uh, the Thursday. That's uh, pretty much ready to go. It's looking pretty good. You'll all enjoy that. It's on the subject of uh, what not to do when titling a game. Love it. I love it. Uh, I think that's it for my stuff. What else we got? Yeah, Frost. What? Uh, obviously, uh, Cold Take was your was your big was your beef stir today, and it's back. This is going to be the normal Cold Take day and time, correct? Yep, once every two Mondays. Uh, yeah, I said that right. And this one's is the forty minute banger. Not not the coldest take, but the most cold take uh, so far. Triple A mm -hmm. Studios sued for addictive games. Had a lovely time playing with my whiteboard. It was a good old time. Um, yeah. So the next one would be. Come Monday, and we've got a bunch of other projects on the back end to look at it, because sometimes you do get a, a beefy deep dive. Other times, maybe it's something shorter. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in terms of other uh, streams and whatnot uh, we have going on this week, um, schedule is still in flux for a couple of days, but us, uh, aside from Yahtzee's tri uh, Yahtzee Tries on Wednesday, we're going to be doing, uh, the, like I said before, the premiere of Firelink on this channel at uh, 6 p.m. Central. That'll be uh, Casey, uh, Nick, and myself chatting about all that good stuff. Uh, and then on Thursday, uh, I believe around 5.30 p.m. Central, we're going to be going live with our Game Awards watch, watch along. So um, mm -hmm. that's, that's, always, that's always fun. Maybe we'll see a Kojima, maybe not. Uh, and then uh, maybe on Friday, we might be playing some Avatar because the Avatar game comes out at the end of this week. And we want to see yes. what those blue folks are up to. I'm hoping we can get a review code in before Nick, long because I want to want to start playing it before next week so I can do a review of it. Nick, Nick. we want to talk about Avatar. Nick, Nick, Nick. Nick. I haven't Nick. seen Nick in the comments. I feel like Nick isn't watching. Anymore. Blue boys, uh, the blue boys. Uh, oh, and then uh, Shawshank. Uh, the, the, uh, we we can't announce anything officially, but fans of Casey and I playing Devil May Cry uh, will be very happy uh, in in probably next week. With a thumbs up, uh, Alex Armstrong, two dollar dono. Thank you so much, Marty. Favorite cocktail and why? Uh, uh, dirty vodka martini um, uh, because it makes me feel fancy, or in old fashion because that's what every bar in Wisconsin serves. Whiskey sour, baby. Beautiful. Frost. Jim Beam. Moscow Mule. Well. Ooh, I like a Moscow Mule. Oh, especially when you get in one of those little yeah, copper mugs. Get, yeah, it's got to come in the copper mug. And then you steal oh, it, and then you smelt it down, and you sell the you sell the copper. I've smelt, never smelt? smelted it, but I do have the cup. <laughs> What's the difference between it's... melting and smelting? Well, it's, it's only smelting if it was ore before you smelted it. Oh, look at that. See, I, I, I like how like him not having gone to school made him so learned. He knows so many things. Yeah, I could ask questions that yeah. I didn't think anyone would have the answer to, and he has an answer to it, which is great. Yeah. Well, I read uh, a bunch of books after I left school, it, just in my spare time. There you go. That was part of it. It wasn't just the fact that I dropped out of school that means I now know a lot of things. Were, there, were they smelting-centric yeah. books? <laughs> like history of the smelt? Just, he'd probably just go curious. Uh, the who smelt it dealt it? Uh, real quick, though, it was a solipsism's crisis, the one that retracted said, Sorry, I forgot question. If you could create your own cup of soup, what flavor would it be? Uh... Like, we create our own cup of soup. Yeah, we can make your own flavor. Oh, a cup of oh, soup, like a, a soup. Yeah, yeah, yeah instant soup. Yeah, like an yeah. instant powdered soup. You just add boiling water to it, and it makes soup. Yeah, I really like like a homemade in a in a little colander in the oven uh, uh, French onion soup with like the crouton and like the melty melty Gruyere cheese on top. But it's like a lot of work to do it. So if I can somehow have that joy instantly, mm -hmm. I would love that. Well, yeah, that's asking a bit much. Yeah, you right. said if we could invent it. What? This is... Okay. It just a flavor. I don't know if you get, like, the texture and everything. What? Well, French onion soup is, like, all everything but the French onion, isn't it? It's, like, all the cheese and croutons and stuff on the top. It's like saying, um, uh, my ideal soup would be grilled cheese and tomato soup without None the tomato you soup. Put forth... What are you here? None of you put forth an idea, and I'm being persecuted for my beliefs. All right. Uh... Cheese, and, cheese and onion. I'm I'm honestly I'm quite satisfied with the flavors of cup soups that are out there. I don't think I can make anyone. 
Both mm-hmm. those answers were bullshit. Birria. There you go. Oh my god, a beer. Oh, that would be good. Oh, that oh, oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh and then uh Tyler Larrabee, ten dollar dono. Thank you so much. I am so happy to be supporting second win frost. Do you have any plans for another series like the stuff of legends? Yes, actually. And we're gonna use the very generic name that I am not gonna bargo bust, but it was hinted during this podcast. You can go rewind. Ooh. Ooh. I am gonna say it wasn't even hinted. I think it was just straight up said. <laughs> yeah, I think I might have just said it at one point. I think we've said it several times, but I like being coy as well. So <laughs> yeah. Um I think I think that's it. I think we did it. Oh, all right. Well, thanks for listening to uh, Windbreaker Podcast. Almost said slightly something else then. That would have yeah. been uh, putting my foot in it, and no mistake. Uh, I was Yati Crucial. I was yeah. Marty. I was Marty. Yeah. And I am, and will still always be, Frost. And thank you so much, Eric, for doing an incredible job of, of producing this episode. Thanks, Eric. Great. Thanks for trying to centralize the camera on Toffee as much as was possible. <laughs> That's a weird lad, him. Yeah, we'll see yeah. you guys next time. Bye. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Thanks, everyone, in chat. Bye, everyone. Bye.